Hello! Welcome to Duncan Egg Bricks and to part 66 of my Hogwarts mock series. In today's video, we're going to be building a custom version of Hagrid's cabin using parts from these two sets. Now, when I say parts from these sets, I'm not just going to exclusively use parts from these sets. However, I am going to use them as my main inspiration, and also they are a very good parts pack. Here we have the set from March 2024, so the most recent set, which is based on the Philosopher's Stone. And then here we have the previous version from 2019, based on the Prisoner of Azkaban. If you haven't seen my review of this set and quick comparison to this one, then you can check it out. I will link it in the corner and in the description. Now, what I've got and done is uh, I've designed my own version, or I've got the majority of a design of my own version of Hagrid's Hut, um, and I just need to actually build it in person so I can actually work out some of the angles. I'm going to be using a combination of techniques from both of these models, as well as some of my own, to get the result that I want. I am going to be basing it more off this version, because I do prefer the Prisoner of Azkaban and Beyond look, and it will give, also gives more scope for interior detail. However, some of the techniques that are in this, and a lot of the parts as well, are going to be very, very useful. So, I think the first thing is to take both of these sets apart, and uh, basically work out the pieces that I've got to build with. Now when I do this I'm not going to take them completely apart because I'm going to retain some of the interior details from both versions because I think they'll be really useful in going forward. So time for me to do some deconstruction and then we'll see what we're actually going to be using. Okay so here we have both sets parted out and split roughly by piece type. I have put a few pieces away that I know I'm definitely not going to be using, such as the tan versions of these 6x6 wedge plates and the reddish brown, reddish brown sorry, versions of these angled wedge plates. I've actually pulled out some dark bluish grey ones from my collection because I know I'm going to be using those instead. There's also quite a few other bits and pieces that I'm probably not going to be using, but I think I'm going to leave them out for now, just so I've got the option of doing so in the future. So as I mentioned, I've got a few things that I need to test in person. Um, I've been designing this in Bricklink Studio, and I've got a design that I'm pretty happy with. But a lot of things like the roof need working out in person because it's not always 100% accurate when you're trying to work out those really difficult angles. So I'm going to use this chance to do some experimenting, make sure I've got a design that I'm happy with uh, that's fairly sturdy and that actually is able to be put together and not fall apart immediately. And then I'm going to be able to actually start working on the main design. Like I mentioned, it is going to be based more on that 2019 set um, and indeed on the Prisoner of Azkaban version with the sort of dual hut with the larger and then smaller. Just gives me a bit more space inside so I can actually add some details. And uh, also it is my preferred version as it matches my Half-Blood Prince, um, Half Prince age, Half-Blood Prince era uh, castle that I am designing. So... I'm going to get on, do some experimentation, and I'll give you some progress updates as I go through the build. After some trial and error and a few bricklink orders, I am ready to build. You can see here I've got my pieces separated by piece type. So in front of you, you've got plates, modified plates and round plates, and uh, various other pieces are just off camera. And in fact, I have started the build. So this is the basic structure of the cabin. And uh, you can see I've got the main part just here and then the small bit off to the side there. I've gone with the dark tan for the floor that matches the most recent 2024 set. Uh, the previous version used regular tan, which looked fine, but I think I do prefer the dark tan overall. Um, I did think I was going to run into a problem when I couldn't find 4x4 wedge plates in dark tan to do a similar sort of thing to this, uh, before realising that there are single plates which aren't classified as wedges, these are classified as modified plates, but these octagonal plates, uh, which have actually been used in quite a lot of Harry Potter sets as well, although I'm not sure if they've been used in dark tan. Um, so they exist, so that's perfect, so I was able to use it there. That did mean, however, that I uh, had to abandon some earlier plans I'd have for having one that opened up. So, for instance, the 2024 version hinges open so the back section can swing round and you can see inside. In fact, it's two parts that swing open. The 2019, uh, sorry, I was about to say 2018. The 2019 version didn't have that problem as it didn't have a back. Previous versions have just opened up. 
um, in two parts. And actually, the only one that was a perfect octagon and opened up in a very unique way was the very first version, which used, again, these 6x6 six six wedge plates, but it actually used them in a, basically a spiral where one was hinged to the next, which all closed to form a perfect octagon, the only one that has done so. I did experiment with that, but... Uh, it basically meant I had to compromise on the interior and I really wanted to do some work on that and make it look really, really nice. So this is the setup that I have gone with. I'll just move myself and Hagrid out of the way. You'll see underneath I'm using these wedge plates here, which allow you to put things at a 45 degree angle. Um, they won't be perfect octagons because the Lego maths just doesn't line up like that. So there'll be six studs long on these four sides and then just under six studs long along here so you can see I've got the four studs there plus an extra one held together with one of the relatively new one by five plates and then I'll be using a similar technique to the 2019 Hagrid's hut with some modified bricks with studs on the side plates and cheese slopes to fill in the gaps and that's going to be the same uh, all the way around on this one this one it's not so big a deal because that four stud is very very close to being the same length as those diagonals so uh yeah you can see i've started to put in some of the details already this is going to be where the front door is and i think we will start with this part so i'm going to be reusing the doors from the 2019 set as well because they came with these quite nice stickers uh, it's a shame they don't extend all the way to the hinges but they look pretty good all i've done here is swap out the single stud that was used as a doorknob for this modified plate or this modified round plate um, to make it look more like a kind of loop that you'd hold on to and turn on an old-fashioned door and that is actually going to go just there and uh, one piece which I haven't picked out ahead of time is just to go in front and that just forms the remainder of the doorstep and I just check it yeah that swings open I initially had another one of these modified plates here before realizing that would stop the door opening and uh, next we're going to be building up the sides of the door frame and for that we're actually just going to be using bricks stacked regularly uh, the 2019 set and in fact the 2024 set both used some snot techniques in order to get the detail there but looking at the hut i uh, realized that actually this is probably a better representation or at least it is for me so there we go those are the columns using a mixture of uh, one by twos in light gray and dark gray and then the masonry bricks in those same colors and you'll notice one of these has actually got a brick with a stud on the back and that's to start holding some interior detail but we'll get to that in a minute now, the way that these are connected at the bottom is using these wedge plates, but at the top, we're actually going to use these hinge or swivel plates. The 2019 set, again, used a similar thing, but it actually used the brick versions of these. So these are going to hold those together there and there. And then I'm actually going to be using one of these modified tiles grubby uh, and this is what's going to help support the roof uh, initially there were going to be plates running all the way across from one side to the other which would support the roof uh, and be supported in turn on these I actually don't need those anymore and I'll show you my roof construction which I'm pretty happy with but I'm still going to be using these as a way to just stop it from falling inwards in front of that we've just got a two by six plate to keep everything sorted there and then we'll have a two by six tile and a one by six tile, which will complete the front there. So that is how the entrance to the hut is looking. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm also going to be, as you can see, reusing some of these leaf pieces. This one's in bright orange or uh, bright light orange, I should say. Uh, and there are also some other ones, like the fingerprints, um, in um, the new reddish orange, which um, I was not expecting, but they look very nice. I'm gonna to have to take this slightly apart so I can get the next sections of walls in. So what I will do is I'm gonna build this wall by wall um, before actually adding all the interior details. So I won't show you the building techniques for every single wall as a few of them are quite repetitive, but I'll build a couple, show you some highlights and then uh, take it from there. I thought I'd pause here to show you the first two walls completed, other than the door, obviously. So they've got the two small windows on that side and the larger window over on that side. It's very similar again to that 2019 Hagrid's Hut, which got a lot of details right, obviously, apart from having a completely open back. Um, I've used that technique again with the studs on the side and then these cheese slopes fixed to a plate. And that just fills in the gap pretty nicely before we get to the next bit of wall also use these one by six tiles along the top and then this round plate which is just attached from the top it's not held in place by anything underneath and that'll just help to smooth the transition to the next section i've tried to vary up the covering on the walls to make it a little bit more interesting so we've got some masonry bricks we've got studs on the side with tiles and ingots we've got places where i've introduced just one by one round plates in there 
here and uh, this is generally a little bit just out of not out of system but just not completely lined up with all the bricks around it uh, this side is ever so slightly simpler but again following similar kind of techniques um, basically this is attached to here so this is nice and strong at the top and at the bottom what we run into here is a slight problem where you can't fix this to this when it's at the right height, obviously, because it's just not in system. There are ways you can probably do it using round plates or bars and clips or something like that. The original 2019 set got around this by actually having a beam that went from this side to this side and also fixed into here. So everything was tied together. I don't want to do that because I'm going to have a closed back and I wouldn't actually be able to get in there um, or to see anything, never mind actually move anything around. So what I'm going to be doing is using the interior furniture to actually secure the walls, which, yeah, maybe don't try that with a real house, but hopefully with this it's going to be enough. Looking at some uh, pictures and stuff that I found online, particularly a really good 360 video of the set at the Warner Brothers Studios tour, um, which I have actually seen in real life, but it was good to see it uh, in more detail. Um, there is actually a dresser against this wall. Now we got some parts or a suggestion of it in the 2024 set, which was really, really helpful. In particular, we got this sticker on the window piece, and I'm going to be using that again in a different combination of parts, and that's going to be against this wall and it's going to allow me to actually create a support for that wall so I'm going to go ahead and do that. The dress has built and in place against that brand new bit of wall you can see it's actually secured here to the wall using another one of those modified tiles which again is going to hold the roof up you can see I've made use of that sticker and just built a bit more of a substantial cabinet to go around it. If we come round to the outside you'll see I've taken advantage of a relatively new piece this slope piece here um, which has come in, I think, some recent, uh, might be wrong, was it first in Speed Champions? I know that it came in the Dune Ornithopter because that's what uh, reminded me that it existed when I got that set. A small bit of dust just there. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that's really good because there's a sort of buttress on the outside of Hagrid's hut just here, and this is the perfect shape for it. I've just used some snot bricks on the inside to hold that up. And actually, when this is laying flat, this also helps to support this wall, so it makes it nice and sturdy. On the inside here, you can see I've put a couple of these Exoforce hands, which I'll always think of them as uh, those pieces, even though they've been used in so many applications since then. Um, and these are just going to be what secures various items around the cabin. So first things first, we have got a lantern. This is just one of the pearl dark grey versions, and that's just going to go by the door. Again, this is a detail that I took from that uh, 360 view of the hut on uh, at the one of the studios tour that is just on YouTube if you want to check it out so that goes by the door and then over here we're going to have a bucket in reddish brown again hanging from another clip uh, some of these details I've actually taken directly from that uh, 2019 set we're also going to be having a couple of things to hold on to some random stuff by the door so we're going to have one of these containers again from that set it's going to go there and then next to it this is from the 2024 set is this barrel in black now this was previously a very rare piece it appeared in uh, one set uh, one classic set i can't actually remember what theme it was from it then came back in the pirates of barracuda bay set and was a big deal and now it's come back here and i don't think anybody's mentioned it but uh, yeah very interesting but i thought i would definitely reuse that so that's going to go there we'll put some stuff in them in a minute now, the 2024 set also came with some nice uh, little round carpet designs. They're not 100% accurate to the uh, to the hut in the film, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and reuse those pieces. So there's dark green here, just uses these two by two quarter round tile pieces. The reason I'm putting them in here is so I can attach another thing, which is going to rest ever so slightly on top of them. Just blocking your view while I'm doing it. So that's there, and we've also got a dark blue one which is going to go here and I'm actually going to take advantage of that round uh, tile that jumper tile uh, for a seat later on so those go there so that just adds a nice pop of color and next to it we're going to place one of these chests so this is the standard pirate's chest but with the newer flat roof uh, flat roof sorry <laughs> flat lid for it and then one of the wand boxes on top which uh, I'm not going to actually pretend is a wand box it's just a, uh, a random thing I haven't put anything inside there yet, but if you want to suggest something that I should put inside there, then uh, leave it in the comment down below. So this is actually just going to sit on a single stud just there. 
get that in the middle. That's why I wanted to put the carpets in because I wanted to uh, overlap that ever so slightly. So there we go. And uh, now we can put some random items in the uh, containers. So we've got a silver spade, pink umbrella, of course, a reddish brown broom and a black axe. So they'll go in there nicely. They're just loosely held, but I think they show the kind of chaotic environment inside Hagrid's hut and of course there is a lot more to come. Right, continuing on round we're going to focus on this wall next. It's going to be a little bit more difficult to see as I build more of these walls in place but I will try and give you as best a view as possible. Now over on this wall or in front of this wall I'm going to be building Hagrid's armchair. There was a fantastic build for this in the 2024 set, complete with a reclining function, which allowed the not very manoeuvrable Hagrid minifigure to actually lie down in it. Unfortunately, there wasn't space to include that in this. So I've gone ahead and come up with my own design, which is basically made in dark orange. And then, um, yeah, we're going to go ahead and create that. But I have been able to reuse some of the pieces from that previous chair in a different build within the house. And I will show you that later. The chair's a fairly simple build, like I said, in dark orange. It does take advantage of some of these relatively new uh, curved slope pieces, the sort of uh, loaf pieces. These are too long in dark orange. Very lucky that they came in that, although one by one versions are available. Um, just a very simple design. It's actually the same uh, footprint as the chair from the 2019 set, although I've tried to make it a bit more rounded and uh, improved on the color. This at the back here is uh, either supposed to be uh, a very squashed cushion or possibly some kind of knitting that Hagrid has been working on. Um, I just went for the most ridiculous clash of colors possible using some bright light blue and uh, bright pink as well. Um, it's just studs on the bottom to represent the feet and then over here there's another bit of uh, carpeting in dark red and light bluish grey. There's a stud just there and that should allow me to attach this chair if I can get it in the right place. <laughs> of course it's one thing to do it off camera, it's another thing to do it on. There we go, I had it slightly too far back. So there, that's attached at a 45 degree angle. Um, and the reason that, yeah, I couldn't fit in the slightly bigger chair is there's going to be stuff going just here. Another bit of uh, decoration up here with a whip piece, which is again from that 2019 set. Just another bit of paraphernalia around the cabin. Right, time to go on to the next wall here. And uh, I ran into an interesting problem when designing this part. So if you look at the exterior of Hagrid's hut, the one that they actually built and uh, put up in Scotland, then uh, it's got these eight walls on the main bit of the cabin and the chimney comes up through the roof here. However, if you look at the interior set, or at least the one as it survives at the studio tour, the fireplace is here. That obviously doesn't make any physical sense, but I suppose that's quite in keeping with a lot of things around Hogwarts, where the exteriors don't necessarily match the interiors. So what I decided to go ahead and do is to be faithful to both parts of it, because uh, luckily I can be. So what I'm going to do is build the fireplace here and then on the exterior have the chimney come up at this part, which <laughs> it's just one of those little quirks where if uh, nobody pointed it out to you, you might not even notice. But I thought it was quite funny when I realised it. it does make life a little bit easier as it means I can use these six studs along here to create the fireplace rather than trying to do something at 45 degree angle here. So that did actually save me a bit of trouble. Right, let's get the fireplace built up and then, uh, in fact, I think I will continue on to do this wall as well and then we will have basically finished the main part of the hut. As it's going to be quite difficult to see this part when I add the next wall in, I thought I'd just show you the fireplace. So this uses that uh, large panel piece that comes from the 2019 set and uh, the reason I've used that is so that I can actually have some of these clips inside, and the bucket's just fallen off, they're actually clips holding flame pieces on the inside. It's really difficult to see. Uh, let's see if that does any better. Uh, yeah, there are just those plume flame pieces in there and then some uh, cheese wedges in, or cheese slopes, sorry, in trans orange to re represent the fire. There's a cauldron in there. Uh, that doesn't actually fit the Lego egg, but that's fine because the egg has actually already been taken out of the fire and Norbert is going to be inside it. So that will make sense. On the mantelpiece there, uh, you can see I've got the oven gloves, which are an amazing print, a candle, a couple of mugs that came in the set, and then that sticker on the 1x6 is again from the 2019 set. Right, put the bucket back on the wall and get on with the next bit. 
The next bit of wall, which is where the chimney will actually be above, is a little seating area. Uh, I've kind of squashed it down a little bit, but there is space for a minifigure to sit there. This is actually attached to the wall with some snot bricks, so it's hovering slightly above the ground. There's a gold frying pan above there on a clip. What we also need to put here now is the table, and that is actually just going to be this very simple build, just a 4x4 round plate in dark brown, with then one of these support pieces in reddish brown, a couple of teacups, teapot, and then the fantastic new Norbert piece breaking out of his egg, which is one of those crown pieces. So I'm just going to try to put him down and break it as I go. So let's put this in in, uh, in a couple of stages. So the table is going to go just there. Just looking at my reference to make sure I get it in the right place. And we'll put Norbert back in there. Pick up the broom that I managed to drop on the floor. There we go. And then we'll add a couple of chairs in. So they're literally just on these textured round bricks to get them up to a decent height. One there. And then, as I mentioned before, one in the middle of the carpet. So there we have pretty much the entirety of the main section of the cabin. So I'll give you a, a better view of it now, uh, because when I start adding in the second half, it's going to be a bit more difficult to see. So I've tried to uh, pack and stack, uh, thank you Robin Hood Bricks, the interior of this cabin with as much detail as possible. I've tried to uh, make it feel really lived in and uh, yeah, spare no detail really. Um, I've left these studs exposed just here because it's kind of where it would be cut off. Um, but other than that, I'm pretty happy with how it goes. This also means that this wall is nice and secure. So, uh, yeah, we're going to move on to the second part of the hut. I've created a little doorway that goes through there, but it also serves to reinforce the connection between this section and this section, because at the moment they are just connected by a thin layer of plates at the bottom. But hopefully, once that's been uh, connected through there, it'll make everything nice and secure. So I'm going to get on, build quite a few walls because they're quite small here and it's a similar sort of technique. And um, one thing I realised I forgot to mention before was these windows. Now, these are the window pieces that came with the 2019 set. And these are the pieces that were created uh, originally for the Lego Harry Potter line in 2018, these sort of latticed windows. Now, there is a latticed version of this window insert for the four wide window frame, and it does come in black. Unfortunately, until recently, it only came in one elf set quite a few years ago, which means it's incredibly expensive, but it has just been remade in the Snow White set that came out very recently. So I'm hoping that soon the price on the aftermarket will drop and I'll be able to replace these windows and those ones over there with those pieces. In fact, I've got it on my digital design and I've got them on a wanted list on my Bricklink just to make sure I nab them when they do come up. So, right, enough waffling about that. Let's get on with the second half of the hut. For a couple of reasons, I've decided to go ahead and build the entirety of the second half of the hut off camera in one go. Uh, the first of those was that it's a much smaller section than the main bit and uh, therefore didn't take as much time and wasn't as interesting. The techniques are the same, including the different patterns and different variations that I've put into the walls. Uh, and again, it uses those wedge plates underneath. The second reason, which you may just be able to see here, is that I experienced a bit of warping. Um, now, I'm not 100% sure if this is actually warping in the plates themselves that are being used, or if it's just one of those features that unfortunately sometimes happens with Lego when you get lots of plates stacked, especially longer ones, and um, that they can kind of pull in slightly different directions. So unfortunately, there is an ever so slight gap underneath the steps just there, um, which I'm really not sure how to solve, short of putting a piece across there to kind of brace the entire thing. Um, so I, I will see. It's OK for now, though, so I think I will leave it as is. In this second section, I've chosen to put Hagrid's bed, and this is where I've managed to reuse some of the pieces from the armchair. Um, obviously far too small for the actual Hagrid minifigure, although it's not too far off actually saying that. Um, but yeah, it's just a nice little bit of detail. I've included a little bedside table there with a mug on it, a shelf with a couple of books and a candle, Hagrid's faithful crossbow right above his bed. I've actually included a window just here, which doesn't appear on the actual hut, but it is this panel piece from the 2019 set, which I really wanted to reuse. And then over on this side, I've done a similar thing to what I did with the dresser on the opposite side of the hut, where I've used this as a way to brace the wall. It's still a little bit um, 
a little bit insecure, but overall it's stronger than it would be if it was just attached at the bottom. And then here we've got a desk with a printed two by two tile, a bottle of water down on the floor there, and then another one of those pearl dark gray lanterns. So this is the hut in general. Um, and also there is the doorway that connects between the two halves. Not sure if I showed the uh, keys hanging up there. That's again, another sticker from the 2024 set inside a uh, sand green window piece. So there we go. So that is the majority of the hut finished, including all the interiors. And I'm really, really happy with how that turned out. Now we get onto the complicated bits, which is the roof or roofs. Now, uh, Lego has attempted a number of different ways to come up with these roofs, right from the first hut, which actually had a roof made of card, which was a very unusual and uh, not very brilliant in retrospect technique um, and uh, yeah not not particularly reliable uh, previous uh, previous subsequent ones have used wedge plates to better or worse effect um, the couple from um, after that so I think there was one 2004 and I want to say one in 2010 or 2011 uh, used similar techniques where the roofs were actually four-sided skip forward to 2019 and the roof would have been eight-sided if it had been complete and the same was true in the 2024 set where it was eight-sided although not all the sides were equal. Now I've taken inspiration from um, 2019 and 2024 sets in order to come up with my own design which I hope is as faithful as I can get to the design of the actual hut. So I'm going to start off with the smaller roof over here which is slightly less complicated and I'll put it all together and then show you exactly how the structure works. Here's the smaller roof all put together. You'll notice it's quite similar to the roof of the second section of that 2019 hut, although I have made some modifications. The first one of which is that it comes off completely like that. It's actually not studded in at all, and it just rests on these two modified tiles like that. Um, the way that this is built is that it's one of these plates with the uh, bars all around it, octagonal bars, and uh, it's actually got another one of those on the bottom, and it uses these Exoforce claw pieces, along with some hollow studs underneath there to keep this all together. It's not exactly perfect, and the gaps around here are bigger than I would have really liked, but for the size um, of this particular bit of the hut, it's basically the best that I could do, and it sits just there. There is a little bit of movement and wiggle room around there, uh, especially front to back, but it's not coming off. It's not gonna fall off onto the floor or anything like that. Just gotta be careful when carrying it around. And actually, when there's not a direct light shining on it like this, uh, you can't really see the interior at all. So pretty, pretty good overall. Um, but yeah, this isn't my perfect favorite bit of it. Um, what I'm actually really looking forward to building is this bit of roof here because it's bigger, there's more space to play with, and I think I've come up with a really good solution that really makes a, a very good overall effect. So I'm gonna get on and build that now. And here's the finished roof. I'm really happy with how this has turned out. It was the result of a bunch of designing in Bricklink Studio and then some trial and error in real life. And I've come up with a design that I'm very, very happy with. Uh, the roofs of Hagrid's Hut are a very unusual shape. They've got a very gently sloping part here and then a much steeper part here, uh, which the 2019 set tried to replicate using these cones. Um, but both roofs are actually like this one, where that was the only uh, steeper section and that just didn't look right. So what I've done is use this as the kind of tip of the roof and then use these uh, four long wedge plates as the rest of it. And that all connects in with a structure underneath that I'm very, very happy about. Uh, it uses uh, these clips. So these are modified one by one plates with a clip and they're held together with a one by two plate on the bottom and an ingot on the top. And that actually clips into a second one of these uh, octagonal plates with bars on eight sides, which then clips into another part of the uh, of the, the structure that joins this lower half together. So they actually stay together it's rigid which I, I really wasn't expecting um uses similar techniques to the smaller roof so it actually uses uh, single clips and then um there are some one by two modified round plates the ones with hollow studs which then allow me to um, offset them and go from a single stud to a double stud um it's not a hundred percent solid as you can see bits pinging off um, and that enables me to get that nice 
um, meeting at the top of all the pieces. It's a little bit difficult to see. I've detailed it up with a lot of those uh, two by two corner um, wedge plates in sand green, along with a bunch of other different parts. This is obviously just representing the uh, the moss on top of the roof, but it does also help to uh, smooth out some of these parts here and also give it a bit of rigidity. The chimney is held on here just using some uh, bar and clip pieces here. Uh, it's not the strongest thing in the world, but it does stay on pretty decently. Um, and there's enough friction in those clips to keep it upright. I've used the uh, inkwell modified tiles and then an upside down or a modified inverted two by two tile, which is then upside down to create the top of the chimney there. And then what we can do is just place this on top and there's enough strength in the structure that it just sits there. So there we are, there is my version of Hagrid's hut, complete with exterior and interior, and I am really, really happy with how this has turned out. I've been wanting to do a modification of the Hagrid's hut set from 2019 for quite a long time, and getting the new 2024 version was the catalyst, which led me to actually go ahead and do this, I used quite a lot of the parts, and I'm very, very happy with how this has turned out, and particularly that I've managed to get a complete interior inside here as well, um, yeah just really really happy means i'll be able to set up the scene inside with the new minifigures with the philosopher's stone scene of norbert in the egg and then at some point in the future i will design a, an upgraded version of the pumpkin patch to go with it and that can then have the scenes from prisoner of azkaban inside it as well so really really happy I hope you've enjoyed. This is probably going to be quite a long video, so thank you for sticking with me till the end if you have done so. Really appreciate it. Leave a comment and let me know what you think about this mock and uh, what you'd like me to see, what you'd like to see me do next. It's been a long day in my Lego Harry Potter mock and beyond. Subscribe to the channel for future updates and uh, yeah, I will see you all again very soon.